Good evening and welcome to Brockton High School at Staff Gymnasium for this BCA Sports presentation of Brockton Lady Boxers Basketball. Tonight, the Lady Boxers welcome in the Whittier Tech Wildcats. My name is Peter Zimmer, joined alongside my broadcast partner, Nubi Rateau. The Whittier Tech Wildcats coming to us from up north in Haverhill, Massachusetts. They come in with a record of 14 and four. They are facing the struggling Lady Boxers. Nubi, your thoughts as we are about to tip off this game? Well, you know, it's going to be a very emotional game, senior night. Oh, here we go. Definitely, you know, an emotional game for, for the Brockton Boxers, particularly the one lone senior on the Brockton Boxers. Definitely, um, definitely going to be a fantastic game. But I think what the Brockton Boxers need to work on, Peter, it needs to be more physical. The fact of the matter is they're not tough enough in the interior. They need to be more physical. And that's not being tall or, or being bigger. It's just having a tough um, tenacity attitude in the interior. Just one senior on this Lady Boxers team on senior night, that senior being the senior center, Diana Abraham. She's on the floor right now, rounding out the starting five for the Lady Boxers. The two guards, number 22, the freshman, Jennifer Crusoe, and number 23, Chantel Jordan, who just puts it in for two. The two forwards, number 11, Chanel Melton, and number 33, Christian McDuffie, as Brockton leads two to nothing. For Whittier Tech, they're starting five, the two guards, number 11, Catherine Roach, and number 14, Kendra Brazil. The two forwards, number 13, Michaela Martin, and number 20, Christina Medley. And at center, Sam Nell, Vanier, Von Lee. Two nothing your score, Brockton on top. 7.05 remaining in the opening quarter. Four eight minute quarters played in high school girls basketball. What are you with another attempt from the outside? This time they connect. That is number 20, Christina Medley. Three to two is your score as Woody or Tech has their first lead of the night. Interesting to see how number 24 for Woody or Tech, um, Sam Nell Vine will play for the team. McDuffie tries for three, answers back to Brockton, no good. Whistle blown down low. Good job by uh, Diana Abraham getting inside position right there. Getting the offensive board. Traveling called against McDuffie. That turns the ball over to Whittier Tech. Three to two still your score. Wildcats on top. Six minutes and 33 seconds left to go in the opening quarter. Now, we've talked about this in the air before. I know we have. How many high schools are called Wildcats? Um, over under by over 20. We need to retire the Wildcat name. Yeah. There should be no more Wildcats. Yeah, exactly, Starting uh, a high school, don't oh, wow, name your school Wildcats. 13, 13, 13, and there we get the high matchup 13, right there um, by Sam Nell just putting it up. Easy two baskets right there. It's funny, I was watching a Simpsons episode and then um, those two teams playing and then uh, one team was like, who are we? The Wildcats. And then they flipped over to another shot as another team said, who are we? The Wildcats. <laughs> so the Simpsons even made note of the yeah. fact of how ridiculous this is getting as Chanel Melton lays it in for two. One point game, 5-4. You score Whittier Tech on top. 5 And, and to I'd go. argue Wildcats are not really that intimidating. It is really interesting. Look at Mickey. I'm not, you know. Well, I mean, what is a Wildcat? I guess a cheetah is a form of a Wildcat. So call them the cheetahs. I mean, if we're talking about feral cats that live, you know, Stray cats, they, 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 they die because no one feeds them. It's not intimidating. But, um, you know, again, when the Brockton boxes, um, back back to the game, Peter, um, <laughs> when the Brockton boxes, whenever the opposition goes to the basket, they really got to make them feel go, feeling going to the basket. You really just got to hammer them and, and make them think twice when they're going to the hoop and, and really punish them physically. Um, you know, not, not dirty, but just a, a tough, hard-nosed foul. That's what the Brockton Boxers They need a, a sense of toughness on the team, which I think they're missing. Jen Caruso, fresh for making a start today. Move the D! Move the D! That's it! That's it! Move the D! 
Nice, nice, nice. 6-6 six, six, your score. 4.50 left to go in the first quarter. McDuffie with the ball for Brock and gets it over to Chantel Jordan inside the paint. Puts it up, no good. Rebounded by Chanel Melton for Brock and keeps it in bounds. She takes it to the top of the key inside the paint. Stops, pops, puts it in, no good. Rebounded by the Wildcats. I like the aggression right there by Melton going to the basket. No one stepping in front of her. She took advantage of it. Seven, seven, seven. seven six people go. on the court right now. Now oh, there's five. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't it amazing last weekend during the Super Bowl? We had two, too many men on the field penalties called. Peter, on we're not talking about that game. Sammy, we're just talking go. about that one moment. I don't know what you're talking about. Kendra, Kendra, Kendra you just go. Kendra, right. just go. Okay. Thank you. There's a psychologist right now getting oh, a new client. I'm not talking. I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, let's go. 13, so we'll leave it at that. 13, 13, 13, 13. We, won't we won't mention the incident. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Foul on the floor right here. You know, you see so many times when you know, when um, basketball players get the offensive board, they like to double and, and, and um, pump fake and so forth. Once you get the offensive board, go up there strong. Caruso for three, no good. Brockton with the rebound up and in. That is Dominique Coley. Brockton has an eight to six edge. Three minutes and 57 seconds left to go in the opening quarter. You know, for a team with a good record, yeah, with Whittier, Brockton not intimidated facing them here at home tonight. Ball kept in bounds by the Wildcats, but Chanel Melton able to pick up the ball for Brockton. Watch the middle, Sammy. Watch right over here. Watch it, kid. Watch it. Chantel Jordan down low. Brockton leads by 4 10 6 your score. Three minutes and 20. Five seconds left to go in the opening quarter. Three-point attempt by Wildcats. Connects once again. That is Christina Medley with her second three-pointer of the game. 10-9, your score. Medley's got the hot hand from the outside. I'd, that'd be accurate, Peter. You would be correct. McDuffie extends upon Brockton's lead, 12-9. 2.55 to go in the first. Brockton playing as physical as you called for at the beginning Hope of this game, Newby? Yeah, it looks like we're on the same page over here. McDuffie with the rebound, gets it over to Chanel Melton. Takes it inside, almost untouched. Oh, Peter, the defense. Peter, you could have drove it to the basket. Our director, Paul Manneville, could have drove it to the basket. I mean, unbelievable. No interior defense right there. Like a, like a truck just running right through a glass shop. Just no intimidation, no fear, and that's how the Brockton boxers should play right there. Fantastic job attacking the basket. Brockton with the lead, 14 to nine, two minutes and 37 seconds remaining in the opening quarter. The Lady Boxers looking very good so far. They're looking outstanding so far, and again, you know, it, it's it's senior night. Uh, the Brockton boxers definitely want to put on a good performance for um, uh, for, for Diana. Um, you know, going out. Can we rename Senior Night to Diana Night tonight? Yeah, might as well be. But, you know, this is a good testament of, I mean, Peter, I mean, look how you fresh around the team. You know, it's, it's absolutely incredible. I mean, kind of what? Uh, you get one in the starting lineup tonight in Jennifer Caruso. This is a young Lady Boxers team that is really only building the great six, things I in mean, the future. There's six freshmen on the team. And we're going to have them for four years. We're going to have them for four years. That'd be correct. So, I mean, you know, it, it's, it, it might be a strategic thing where, you know, you, you stack your, your varsity team. You know, with, with some freshmen, a lot of underclassmen, and then, you know, you're gonna go through the growing pains, but eventually, you know, when when they start to become sophomores and juniors, it's a real powerful, uh, powerful basketball team. Yeah, Brock Boss definitely have gone through the growing pains this year, but it looks like they might have a bright future. That's it. 
Match up, match up, match up. Pick him up, pass. Pick him up. Fourteen to eleven, you score now as Whittier makes a three-point game once again. McDuffie with the ball from Brockton. McDuffie gets it over to Melton. Melton puts it up. No good. Rebounded by Whittier. That was Kendra Brazil. Gets it over to. I think that was Medley, tries to shoot the three, no good, rebounded by Chantel Jordan, by Brockton, Brockton coming down the other side, we have a whistle. I mean, I'm just thinking, I mean, I don't want to think too far ahead, but I'm thinking next year, Peter, I mean, you're going to have, you know, I really see a lot of potential, and, um, well, not potential, the talent's there. I mean, Chan Chanel Melton, uh, Chantel Jordan, and McDuffie. I mean, they, they're three coming back, probably the three prolific scorers coming back next year. Um, you know, with, with, with Jen Caruso at the point and a very athletic Dominique Cooley at the center. Um, sky's the limit for this team. McDuffie with the short jumper, 16 to 11. You score a buck 40 on the clock here in the first quarter. Go, go, Kendra. That's it. Two, two, two. Two shots, two shots. Line up. Two shots. Saying the fouls before the shots, it looks like they're not going to take two shots. They're going to take Seven. out of bounds. Look up, look up. They had two players wide open, Peter. And she ultimately gets to the Chantel Jordan. One bounce puts it up and in. Like Cedric Maxwell over there. I'm screaming to the team. She might I, forgot, I, forgot, I forgot I'm announcing. <laughs> 18 to 11, Brockton on top, a buck 18 left to go. Southern Maxwell was honored recently Hold along go, with Sean Grandy for calling their 1,000th game together as part of the Celtics radio yes. broadcast team. Southern Maxwell, uh, very nice person. I had a chance to uh, meet him uh, once and at the red line free meds? in train station. Cedric Maxwell once came into Sona's One Stop, a convenience store in Torrey Street, Brockton, where I saw him. I actually have Cedric Maxwell's cell phone number. Yes, yes. I won't give it up on air. I wonder where you got that from. <laughs> a buck 09 left on the clock. 18 to 11, your score. Brockton on top. Yeah, don't be calling Cedric up at real I never called Cedric, but I feel like calling him and saying, quack, quack, quack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jen got away with the backcourt violation right there. Shoot it there, shoot it right here. Watch fall, watch fall. Watch it, Riles, shoot it, Riles, Cedric Maxwell, 1981 NBA Finals MVP. You know, it's funny, Cedric, um, one of my favorite moments by, uh, you know, at, at that, when 2000, that's really the first time the Boston Celtics and Sean Grady and Cedric Maxwell were really announcing a playoff uh, contending team, a like serious contender. So, you know, Cedric Maxwell saying, you know, it was, it was tough for him, you know, announcing, you know, and trying to be somewhat neutral. I mean, he's really, you know, rooting for the Celtics. So there was one play where Paul Pierce dribbling the ball up the court, and there was a play, and I think it was Richard Hamilton was behind him. So as Grandy was saying the play by play, <laughs> Richard Hamilton is sneaking up behind Paul Pierce to steal the basketball. Cedric Maxwell yells, "Watch out!" <laughs> <laughs> and then Grandy's like, "Dog, dog, dog, dog! You can't do that." <laughs> and this is an on-air discussion between Grandy and Maxwell. Yes. <laughs> 18 to 11. He yells, watch out! <laughs> There's more subject man. Oh, well, great coast to coast basketball. Right? That's how you play basketball right there. I'm very excited about this team's future. Oh, Chanel Melton with the steal, lays it up easy like Sunday morning. Brockton capping off an excellent Seven, opening six, quarter. Five. They lead by 11, 22 to 11, just three seconds to go. Medley for three for Whittier, connects. Doesn't count if you didn't call backboard. So the quarter ends, Brockton on top by eight, 22 to 14. If you're head coach April Dingwell for the Brockton Lady Boxers, you have to be very pleased with the way your team has performed. If you're head coach Kevin Bradley for the Whittier Tech Wildcats, you have to be saying, we're the ones who are 14 and four here, right? Hey, Peter. Um I wish I brought the boss play this the whole season. They, you know, it'd be definitely a different overall record. The fact that matters, Peter, they're just being a little more aggressive. That's it. You know, being more aggressive on the, on the defensive side of the basketball. They're limiting um, Woody Tech to, uh, to one shot and done. They're doing a good job getting the boards. And one thing about Woody Tech is that they're selling for the three-point shot. They're really not attacking the basket, which is another reason why the Brock box is up right now. 
You know, they're hitting a few threes, but uh, they continue to shoot the threes. The Brock DeBoss is going to be very happy with that because they're going to get the board. You shoot, you shoot a three, at least a long rebound, at least uh, easy points on the offensive side of the basketball. You know, great uh, Cedric Maxwell stories. Um, as Sean Grandy is announcing that, you know, uh, final seconds against the Lakers when they're going to win their 17th NBA championship, he's going through his whole speech, you know, Boston Celtics, yada, yada, yada. And as he's saying that, Cedric Maxwell yells, I got the ball! Uh, that is a great, <laughs> that is a great Cedric Maxwell moment. I got the ball. And you got, you got picture, you know, Grandy, this is like his moment. Like his first time announcing <laughs> and a Celtic ruins it. <laughs> And he just I, he ruins it as he gets the, the, the game ball. I mean, how mad would you be at me, Peter, if I did that to you? Uh, i take it for what it is. You know what? I, I really think they're having a tough time just staying in front of Chanel Mountain because she's really having her way going to the basket. Procton leads by 10 now, 24 to 14. Foul called on Brockton, and we're going to see Medley head to the free throw line. You know what's interesting? They call him Brockton red. The referees are calling them red. What are they calling Whittier then? With the maroon. Why would not they just call Brockton white? Oh, no. And the, yeah, am I right? Does yeah, this, yeah, theoretically. This doesn't really make any sense. Why don't you uh, bring up the MIAA officiating committee? <laughs> <laughs> MIAA not sanctioning this, this this contest. They only do the playoff games. March down there to Franklin. Right, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. <laughs> MIAA. And, and take, a, and take a stance. The Missing in Action Association is one yes, reporter Sammy. once referred to them as. Sammy, God, Sammy, run. Just run, Sammy. Sammy, run. And in the game for the first time tonight, Sharon Springsteed. And Springsteen drives to the hole. Now she goes to the free throw line. Now they say 14 red. See, I think they are calling Whittier red. I think that they called the refs the wrong thing last time. Okay. So Whittier is red, Brockton is white. I like to think so. Or maroon, if you will. That's two syllables. That's too much. We don't have that much time, uh, newbie. <laughs> the referees. If you will. <laughs> if you will. One of, you, one of the... Many newbie terms that he uses to sound intelligent, like per se, per se, quid pro quo. I don't say that. I was just thinking of Latin terms that you might want to add to your vernacular. Look that one up, newbie. That one could be good for you. Chantel Jordan. You got to be in more control going through the basket right there. Uh, she's been struggling throughout the season, just being control in the open court. You know, she had an opportunity to really make a three-point play right there. You got to finish strong. Jordan heading to the free throw line. This foul is called on number 13, Michaela Martin for the Wildcats. 25-16, Brockton on top. We are talking about these team names earlier, Wildcats, Boxers. Oddly enough, the most prominent athlete ever to come out of Whittier Tech High School was a boxer. Jeff Frazier, who appeared on the first two seasons of the Contender Series, who was tragically killed just last weekend when he was hit by a train. Moving on. 25-16. Brockton on top by nine. Go through.
Rock the blocks are definitely um, strong performance here in the first half. Very impressed. Go off, Sanders. Go off. Loco, Loco, Loco. So Chanel Melton will inbound from underneath for Brockton. 6.18 left to go in the half. Melton gets it into the freshman Caruso. Jordan takes it to the hole, puts it up, no good. Rebounded by Caruso, tries to get it out to Melton. However, Medley gets in the way for the Wildcats. Ultimately, it is going to be Whittier putting it up and in. And laying it in is Andrea Terranova. 25-18, Brockton on top. Five minutes and 43 seconds to go. Brockton Bucks have to be careful right now, Peter, because you know Whittier Tech is going to try to make a comeback. Close this gap, make a run towards the... End of the first half, the Brockton Bucks have to weather the storm right now because they're going to make a comeback. You know, they're going to make some type of a run. Boxes have to um, weather the storm. Let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go, let it go. Turnovers like that are what keep the team to the ball game. And they say last touch on the Wildcats, so it'll be the Boxers' ball. You gotta do the outlet pass right there. Coming yeah. over the back That's foul it, Timmy. Timmy. right there. But uh, when the Brockton bosses get the board, you gotta look up and see who's open up court. It's been a second time where they miss someone wide open up the court. When you get the rebound, you gotta immediately look up and look for the outlet pass. Jordan thought about the three. Nice block by Von Ley. Yeah, you got to bring up stronger than that, Peter. Not going to cut it in varsity. And that is going to be a foul called against Brockton before Terranova got that basket off. So no basket. They'll inbound from underneath. It's interesting. I thought that was during the act of shooting. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Loco, 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 let's go, come on, come on, That is too bad, kid. Travon called against Brockton. This turns the ball over to Whittier Tech. Four minutes and 23 seconds left to go in the half. 25 to 18 is your score. Box is on top. Box is just scoring three points here in the second quarter. And just four for Whittier Tech. It's been a low scoring quarter to say the least. That'd be correct, Peter. You've said that like three times tonight. That'd be correct, Peter. Well, Peter, you're correct. What do you want me to say? It's incorrect? You could add something instead of just Ooh, telling me that I'm right. I know I'm right. <laughs> you know, Peter, we're not going to play the Let's Show Up Newbie game <laughs> on national TV. National TV? Public access. Local national TV, I mean. <laughs> That's an oxymoron. McDuffie down low in the paint. 27-18, Brockton on top. She'll look to make a three-point play out of this. She'll head to the basket. That foul is called against number 11, Catherine Ro Roach for the Wildcats.
There we go right here. Brockton Box extend the lead at 10 points. Very impressive to play so far, Peter. Yo, loco, loco. Good camera work by uh, Michael Charles Simmons, the third right there. Great shot you're looking at. Good job, Mike. Is he really the third? No, I made that up, but it sounds good, doesn't it? I believe his name is Michael Charles Simmons, though. That is his middle name, Charles. Yes, I believe so. You know, I've been saying Michael Charles Simmons. It may not be. But you know what? It's, it's almost like that um, that, that uh, Jay-Z song, Paris. No one knows what it means, but it's provocative. It gets the people going. Michael Charles III. It's Michael Charles Simmons confirmed. The third. 30 to 18, Brockton on top. 313 left to go in the half. Jennifer Caruso with the ball. Stops, pops inside the perimeter. No good. Rebounded by Whittier Tech. Andrea Terranova came up with the ball. Tries to pass it to a teammate. Jennifer Caruso gets in the way. Intercepts. Gets it over to Chanel Melton. Melton in the corner to Jordan for three. No good. Rebounded by McDuffie. Off the glass. And an excellent, excellent team play by Brockton. Great inside position by McDuffie right there. Position herself to get the offensive board. That's Brockton Boxer Basketball. Go, go. Oh. Stay on her, Rachel. Stay on her. Watch her. Watch her, Drake. Getting something going for Whittier Tech. That is Michaela Martin, 32-22. Brockton leads by 10. Jordan takes the hole no good. However, she draws a foul. She'll head to the free throw line. Brockton not having much issue getting inside the paint. And when they do, they either go to the hole and put it up and in, or they're drawing fouls, it seems. That is going to be the eighth team foul called against Whittier Tech in this first half. Brockton in the bonus. They'll be shooting foul shots for the remaining two minutes and six seconds of the half, each and every time they're fouled, Jordan makes her first free throw attempt. We can see Dominique Coley step into the game as Aliyah Brito takes a breather. Aliyah Brito, a freshman. A lot of freshmen, like you said. It's six freshmen. And they're getting playing time, too. They're not just sitting on the bench. Nice block by Von Lay. All right, all right, all right. Take Well, we have a chance to want to self promote myself. Um. <laughs> <laughs> the silent um, tour is going to start. We're all so interested, newbie. <laughs> The Salon Tour, um, the document that struck um, hundreds of, uh, of hearts, will start in New York, um, Queens, New York, as we'll be competing in the Queens Easy, World yes. International Film Festival. And I hope and expect to win um, first place. So hopefully um, that will happen. If it doesn't happen, I'm going to feel like a complete idiot. Go, 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 go. But uh, that is in three more weeks, so if anyone's interested in going, you know, take the trip up to, uh, to New York and support uh, a fellow Brocktonian. Brockton's going to call a timeout as they lead by 8, 33 to 25. One minute, 50 seconds remaining in the half. April Dingwell calls a timeout. As who would have thought that Brockton would have led this game for a significant portion in double digits coming into this game you against Whittier Tech? I'm, I'm very excited the way the Brockton Box are playing. You know, they're a little more aggressive. Well, excuse me, they're a lot more aggressive than um, than I typically see them play, which is a good thing. And I just, you know, strategically, I like what a April Dingwell is doing, starting a few freshmen, kind of planting a seed for the next upcoming years. And you know, I, I'm just looking at this roster right now. I mean, I'm very, very excited about the future. Um, six freshmen on this, on this basketball team. We have three juniors, Melton, um, Jordan, and McDuffie, who are uh, very capable scorers. 
they're capable of scores this season and will continue next season. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm very optimistic, Peter. Deflection apparently. Back up, Mets, Mets, watch. Look around, Mets, look around, back up, Mets. Ah, just missed it. Dude, he's tipped. Get this hit right there. Three. Hey, you missed. Work it back, come back. Head down the middle, Ricky. Block and fall on the Wildcats. Jordan at the free throw line again. One and one situation as Brockton in the bonus. She's been doing a fine job tonight getting the line. Brockton looking to make this a 10 point game with a buck 35 on the clock here in the first half. And she'll do just that. 35 25 year score. Brockton with the lead. Oh, what a pass! Hey, get it left! I like how the box right now are talking on defense. They're communicating right now, Peter. They're playing fantastic basketball. No interior defense. Absolutely no interior defense by the Wildcats. Just, just cupcake, you know, mattress soft defense. And the Brock the Box are taking full advantage of this. This, this is, this is good aggression right here. Jordan at the line again, 38 to 25 now. 61 seconds left to go in the half. Brockton is setting a pretty feverish pace here tonight, newbie. Scoring wise. Yes, they are. I mean, they're on pace of, you know, to break 80 points. Is that another foul called against Whittier Tech? not. For a moment I thought it was. No one, no one Sam Hill is going on over here right now. Speaking of great games on Lakers and Celtics, wow, what an incredible matchup again. Overtime win for the Lakers yeah. last night. You know, one of the few players that scares me in sports. It's only three players that scare me in sports. So legit just scare me when they're either up at the plate, have the football, or have the basketball. Kobe Bryant, Peyton Manning, Derek Jeter. And Kobe strikes fear in me. We're a few months in to uh, your boy Shaq's run at TNT. How's that going? Better. Um, still, you know, I've, I've noticed Shaq is not good at analyzing the game of basketball, but he's very good at um, the conversational stuff in terms of sharing NBA stories and, you know, talking about the greats and the legends. But when it comes down to actually breaking down numbers and crunching down and 
analytically breaking down the game. Uh, he really has a, a tough time doing that. Thirty-six seconds left on the clock. Whittier Tech with the ball. It's Medley, and we're going to whistle down low on Brockton, and this is going to be Medley heading the free throw line. Good shooter, like we've said throughout the broadcast tonight. Miss Christina Medley. Outstanding shooter, but the Brockton boss still got about six seconds to get the last shot. Excuse me, um, I apologize. Woody and Tech have six seconds to get the last shot as um, the shot clock will be turned off when they get the ball back. Twain on the game clock. Back, Sammy, get back, Sammy, get back. Is that our ball? Our ball, our ball. Kendra! I'm mistaken. I, I, I said the bottom box. You know, that shot clock thing messed me up, too. Yeah, it was, it was, they said they had 24 on the shot. Clock. Just forget the last about minute and a half of your life, and just ignore what I just said. I'm sitting here thinking something's not right. <laughs> the scorekeeper just messed me up, honestly. How's this for a stat from our production staff? It has taken five minutes to play. 40 seconds of basketball due to the amount of fouls taking place in the latter part of this first half. Yeah, both teams are now in a double bonus. Let's see how long we can go without a foul. 17.7 .7 seconds left in the half. When will there be another foul called? Can we make it through the half or no? Do we make it to 10 seconds without a foul being committed? I believe so. I'm going to say no. Well, Peter's only one way to find out. That's right. I'm saying within seven seconds, there will be another foul committed. Oh, that was a clean block. Oh, oh, I just missed it. <laughs> I just missed it. Let's do the math. How, how many seconds was that? That was about, that was just over nine seconds of basketball without a foul. Can we, can we make it, can we make it out of the rest of the half without a foul in the movie? That's the question. I like this game. How do we lose ourselves? You know what? I say this, I say she's going to miss this shot. They're all going to go up for the rebound and there'll be another foul. <laughs> Yo, if that happens, I'm leaving. Oh, That's no <laughs> we got one half right. One half is right. Springsteed. And the first half comes to an end. Brockton with a 10 point lead. 38 to 28. Brockton looking outstanding through the first half of play. Watching BCA Sports, Nuburu Cho, and Peter Zimbor courtside. We'll step aside for a quick breather. Back with second half action on the other side. And we return to Staff Gymnasium for a second half action between the Brockton Lady Boxers and the Watch Whittier the Tech Wildcats. Brockton with a 10 point lead as we're now amidst the second half. 38 to 28 is your score. Scoring leaders to the first half of play. Leading score in this game belongs to the Whittier Wildcats. That would be number 20, Christina Medley. She's got 18 points on the evening. She is a three for four shooting three pointers and five for eight at the free throw line. She's having herself a fantastic game. But Brockton getting it done all around as a team. Christian McDuffie with 13 points on the night. And then Chantel Jordan and Chanel Melton 
each with 10 points on the evening. Brockton have themselves an excellent first half. They lead 38 to 28 with seven minutes and 30 seconds left to go now in the third quarter. You know, Peter, speaking of excellent, let's give it up to the halftime um, concession crew. Probably one of the best Swedish fish I've tasted in my life. This is some excellent Swedish fish. Now you're eating Swedish fish right now during the broadcast. Wouldn't that make it more difficult to speak during the broadcast? Because Swedish fish, they, they are sweet. They do get stuck go, in go, the teeth. Go. And no, the, there's a special coating on the Swedish fish where it doesn't get stuck on your teeth. That's what makes it so good. Medley making it 20 points the evening now, making an eight point game, 38-30 Brockton. 6.54 left to go, but 10 point game once again as Chanel Melton lays it in. Chanel Melton's having a field day right now. Absolute field day. She's just picking apart this defense. Nubi, how much Swedish fish would you say you eat during the basketball season? I do notice you like the sweets. That's a three pointer by Medley again. She is on fire. Oh, she picked up the foot. Peter, can you repeat the question? How much Swedish fish do you eat during basketball season? I notice you're a fan. This is actually my first Swedish fish bag of the season. Oh, maybe it's Skittles normally. No, Sour Patches. I'm a Sour Patch guy, Peter. A man who likes a good Sour Patch. You know, he's the most optimistic coach for a team that's losing in my life. His coach Rudy Tech, he's very optimistic and I don't this know why. This team is down by seven, 6.16 to go. You know what? It's a competitive game, all things considered. Rudy Tech not out of this whatsoever. Oh, it's a very competitive game. That's that's besides the point. I mean, they're only down by three possessions. Looking to make it a two possession game. At the free throw line is Catherine Roach. And she'll do just that. Actually, that was not Roach. That was Kendra Brazil. 40-34 is your score. Six-point edge for the Lady Boxers. 6-13 left to go in the third quarter. Trina, Trina. And it looks like Christina Medley is... She's receiving medical attention from trainer Jerry Connor for Brockton. Something happened while she was on the floor she that she's not feeling too good about. Well, she said she couldn't see. So I'm not sure, maybe it was one of her contacts or something, or... Both in the something. eye, perhaps? Um, we don't want to speculate too much. Migraine, I don't know. I don't know, I don't want, I don't want to take a guess here, but she said she couldn't see. 40 to 35, your score, Brockton on top. McDuffie with the ball, leading score for the Lady Box with the first half of play, puts it up, no good. Dominique Cooley with the rebound. Up. Rebound! No good. Rebounded or attempted to be rebounded by Whittier. They knock it out of bounds, Brockton ball. I'm going to try one of these Swedish fish that you speak of. You know, I'd rather you ask me nicely than just take it, Peter. I'm sorry, I just took it. It's called broadcast of courtesy. Rule number one, section one, part one, ordinance one. Die shall ask, die color commentator to ask to get die Swedish fish. They're stuck in my teeth. Well, I don't tell you. <laughs> you think I lied about it or something? About not getting stuck in your teeth? Are you insinuating I'm a liar? You said it had a special coat. Yeah, it had a special coating. <laughs> Rockton with the ball. Jordan with the ball, puts it up. No good. Rebounded or attempted to be rebounded by Coley. Gets in the hands of Jordan. She's fouled. She'll head to the line. Did you really believe me, Peter, when I said it had a special coating on it? No, I did not. <laughs> I don't believe much of what you say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jordan hits her first of two at the free throw line. 41 to 35, you score Brock with the lead. 524 left to go in the third quarter.
great basketball right there. Excellent job looking up court, finding the open person. Great outlet pass. Traveling violation. Stop, stop, stop. That wasn't a foul. <laughs> Referee is having a discussion with the coach saying, stay off the court. And he's like, when was I on the court? And then he's like, just now. <laughs> so he moved his foot from the court. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> Got another freshman into the game for Brockton, Narita Montrand, who we've yet to see here on BCA this season. Narita Montrand, number five, the freshman in on the action as Brockton leads by 11, 46-35. Go, 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 go. You know, it's so funny how much leeway coaches have to hire the level of basketball it is, like in college and NBA. I mean, Doc Rivers sometimes will be in the right in the middle of the court. <laughs> and sometimes you'll get away with it and not get caught for a technical foul. Bill Belichick's done it before. <laughs> I remember years ago at Severian High School, Armin Colombo, you know, probably stepped like 10 feet onto the field, and the whole crowd from Severian started yelling, get off the field, get off the field. Then there was that one old cameraman for Brockton who's still around, floating around. He was a scout cameraman. His name was Vaughn. Okay. <laughs> Started yelling back at the fans for Severian, shut up. <laughs> and they started yelling back at him. And our own, our own Brian Madden had to take off his headsets and get in the middle of the <laughs> And break it up. And Break up this dispute. <laughs> uh, Never forget that. Only public access when the announcer takes off his headset to play Peacemaker. At first he didn't take his headset off and said, would you guys hold on? Three-pointer by Whittier Andrea Terranova from the outside. 46-39 Brockton on top, 325 to go in the third. Now how did this happen if you guys were on the booth? We actually were not in the booth. There wasn't enough room in the press box, so we were located just outside the press box. Okay. <laughs> Timeout called by Brockton. 46-39, you score boxes on top, 316 left to go in the third. And head coach Kevin Bradley, with a lot of positive energy, he likes the way his team is playing here in the second half. Man, where is this broadcast going, Peter? We've gone through so many roller coaster moments here. <laughs> to say the least. No fun intended. <laughs> I just finished that Swedish fish, by the way. Yeah. I like this coach. I'm listening to Kevin Bradley's he's speech really, that he's giving to me right, right now. now, and I like everything he's saying. All he needs to say right now is make sure they remember they played the Wildcats. 
No, I like everything he's saying. He's really instilling some fire into his team. He says, you guys are 14-4. and four. You're one of the best teams in the state. Let's show them why. You have not lived up to your potential tonight. Live up to your potential well, from here on forward. You're only down by seven. And I agree. A lot of times, though, we've seen it so many times in sports where you play up to your competition or down to your competition. Mickey! You know, and I think it's a little bit both right now. The Brockton boxes. Mickey! No, you know, that's a very that's competitive team coming here, so you kind of you kind of play up to that. Whittier knows, you know, it's too struggling, so they kind of take it easy. Sharon Springsteen puts it in for 248-39. You score Brockton with the lead. But everything Kevin Bradley was saying is right. Von Lea down low, no good. Chanel Melton with the rebound for Brockton. She's fouled. <laughs> this has been a very entertaining game, though, thus far. Probably one of the best um, games this season in terms of entertainment-wise. That's it, Dre. Good job, Dre. Good job. Good job there, man. Come on. Mickey, Mickey, Mickey. Timmy. So for three, no good. This is awesome. You're enjoying yourself, Newbie. Yeah. You're enjoying yourself. Peter, I love this game. I love this game of basketball. I don't think people truly understand how much I love the game of basketball. You know, just everything that goes along, you know, the antics, the game, the, the dribbling and the passing and the shooting. Quick breathing, quick, give you a quick breathing. Stuff like that. 49-41, Chantel Jordan at the line makes her first of two. She's been at the free throw line numerous times tonight and she's getting the job done 50 to 41 brockton with the lead one minute and 43 seconds left to go in the third and the scoreboard has not started ticking yet yeah that's why i've never seen a, a coach who guys the scoreboard's not ticking and now the scoreboard is ticking because i said something peter play by play guy slash scorekeeper So I've never seen a coach who grunts as much as this coach for Whittier Tech. He does a lot of grunts and growls and, and so forth. It's pretty this funny. But you know what? It's obviously been effective this season. 14 and 4. And you know what? <laughs> the grunting and growling has been effective this season? No, it's his, his style. <laughs> you were just having the Laugh Alley Olympics tonight, maybe. <laughs> Easy. No, I was saying the grunting and growling. And you say... You know, it's been affected this season. His style, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing in the middle. Oh. I mean, some baseball managers okay. intentionally Sammy. get ejected from games to fire up their team. Yeah. It's a tactic. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that tactic at the high school level for any sport, though. <laughs> You know, it's fine. I've not seen a high school coach ever get kicked out of a game, though, of all my years announcing. 
Ortiz. Nor have I. But I've, I've seen them be asked to sit down. Never seen them get ejected. I mean, uh, we had uh, Coach Ortiz was pretty fiery back in his heyday. I guarantee you, if we see the, if we happen to see it someday, it will be the coach for Severian. No, that it'll, guy be, will it'll go. be the coach for Brighton, I believe. No, the Brighton guys are pretty calm, cool, and collected. <laughs> Peter, I, I think it's really mistaken. <laughs> uh, he was asked to sit down during the holiday tournament, the guy yes. from Brighton. But that was just because I thought the officiating crew in that game was a particularly overly sensitive. I don't know, but typically they are. If that officiating crew had been the officiating crew for the Severian game that same day, they would have tossed that guy. <laughs> Springsteed with the ball. Nearly loses it. And that's going to be a foul on Springsteen. You know, I was, um, I, I, I've been threatened to be kicked out of a basketball game as coaching my basketball team when I was a coach of my, the Bridgewater St. Tamara basketball team. You get ejected from an intramural no, basketball game? No, I was game? threatened to be ejected from the game. I got a technical foul. How official are these games? They're actually very official. You, you know, you think of intramurals and you think it's just a, a you know, a regular, you know, la di da game. It's actually very, very intense. Oh! Oh, wow, what a floater. Big basket there by Jen Caruso. She's been struggling from the perimeter the whole game. That one basket, maybe will um, kind of push her confidence as she takes another shot. Sun Lay with a nice block for Whittier Tech. Springsteed from the outside, no good buzzer sounds. Third quarter comes to a conclusion. Brockton still up by 10 as they were at halftime. This time it's 53 to 43. Brockton high with the lead. Eight minutes of basketball left to be played and Brockton has led from the early portions of this game onward. We'll see if what Whittier Tech has up their sleeves in an attempt to make this game closer than it has been. They'll try to take the lead, which they have not had since the opening minutes of the game. Peter, what separates good teams from bad teams in the fourth quarter? What separates good teams from bad teams on the Brockton box is going to be able to keep this lead and withstand the run, because we all know that Woody Tech is going to make a run in the fourth quarter. Um, great test for the Brockton box right now. Great test to see how mentally tough they are. And they're taking a look inside the eyes. The teammates are taking a look inside the eyes of Christina Medley, who we talked about was complaining of her vision on the sidelines. And not sure what's going on there. Right, you all set? Shoot, just shoot. forget whatever happened. Shoot, it's a new game. The game is now just eight minutes. The game is eight minutes now. Find the shot in eight minutes and we'll be all right. We'll go home winning. I think it's a very positive, refreshing outlook that Kevin Bradley has in the game to be head coach for Whittier Tech. Here we go. Right towards us. You almost shouted at Cedric Maxwell I got the ball, didn't you? <laughs> Possibly. We've had a few Cedric Maxwell moments tonight, Newby. Okay, that's a uh, melt on the ground. That's a big. And we've got Chanel Melt on right the ground. There. Looks like she is favoring her right leg, perhaps a cramp. Hopefully, nothing serious. I mean, look, it looks like it's a cramp, possibly. Yeah, it looks like it's just a cramp. So two freshmen in the game for the Brockton boxes. Jen Caruso and uh, 
Nidra Montron. Medley lays it up and in. Eight point game, 53-45, Brockton on top. Traveling called against Brockton. And it is going to be Whittier ball. Whittier trying to creep back into this game. I like the uh, leadership by Santel during this kind of time. I want to calm down, guys. You know, I think it's a good time right here that um, yeah, April Dingwell is bringing the veterans back into the game to kind of restore a little order right now. Santel Jordan's wide open in the interior. But it doesn't matter at this point. Great floater right there, Peter. That's what I'm talking about, Peter. That's tough basketball right there. Hard nose. Right to the basket. No fear. No hesitation. So both teams in the bonus with six minutes and 40 seconds left to go in the game. That could be a very long six minutes and 40 seconds, Newby, with both teams shooting free throws from here on out. Yes. Definitely. I'm, look, I'm looking at Chanel Melton. New research team is um, check up on the injury. And it looks like she may be good to go. She's running around and trying to stretch out um, her calf muscle. And she'll be back into the game. Melton comes to the game, not quite the Josie, loose read entrance, but definitely everyone's happy to see her. And we have a foul called on number 14. Kendra Brazil for the Whittier Wildcats. That's her fourth personal foul this game. Brockton leads by eight, 57 to 49, 628 left to go. Chantel Jordan at the free throw line. Chanel Melton back on the floor. And you can tell she's still a little cramped up. And by the way, she's sauntering around, newbie. Play the foul game, newbie. The foul game. How long it's going to take for the next foul to be committed? 15 seconds. Okay. 6:25 on the clock now. Let's see what time it is next time a foul is committed.
got four fouls. Got to get a foul on it. Stay with it, Dre. Shoot it, Dre. Shoot it. We've passed the 15 second mark. <laughs> Shoot, Dre! 59 49, Brockton with the lead. Three pointer by Chantel Jordan, 62 49, Lady Boxers. That's a dagger right there, Peter. That's a dagger. Good time I called by uh, my coach right there. It's going to be a close to a turnover or a jump ball. So Kevin Bradley, head coach for the Whittier Tech Wildcats, calls a timeout. Five minutes, 45 seconds left to go in the game. Brockton with the lead, 62 to 49. And newbie with football season officially over with that game that will not be discussed. Right now it's NBA and NHL for the pros, then pretty soon spring training. Pitchers and catchers will be reporting. Yeah, I think the Red Sox are gonna stink this year. That's an optimistic way to look at it. <laughs> I really think they are. I'm not excited about baseball season at all. I'm one of those fans after they won the second championship that pretty much, I don't care as much for the Red Sox as I used to. Last, year's, Cause, cause, team, last well, year's team was a little bit discouraging, well, not wasn't a little it, bit, a lot of It's a not a likable team anymore, the Red Sox. You know, back in the, you know, between 03 and 07, it was a very likable team. You had a lot of personalities there. You know, you had some, you had some definitely, um, you know, Pedro and. Now you, you know, get out of shape guys. Now you got Kevin Millar. You know, you had, you had some, you know, I mean, the guys over there weren't necessarily in shape, but they're very likable characters. You know, Kevin Millar, how can you not like him? Bill Miller, I mean. Bronson Arroyo. Bronson Arroyo. to play by Christian McDuffie. Good at the two. Sorry, Dre. Seemed like a football play right there, but uh, your know, Brockton boxes no. The Brockton boxes no. They're in the penalty, so uh, you know anything going to the basket, going to free throws. So they want to take full advantage, of, full advantage of that. Next basketball game will be uh, Brockton and I versus New Bedford, Peter. Um, a huge game, big three matchup. The most intense game on Valentine's Day, go figure. It'll be a St. Valentine's Day massacre. Maybe, Brockton and New Bedford always uh, a great atmosphere to call the game. You and Miles will be uh, taking that call. Should be a great game. 63 to 51, Brockton on top by 12 points, 450 to go in the game. Jennifer Caruso with the ball. We start tonight at freshman, and she puts the ball right into the hands of a player for Whittier, but Brockton bounces back with the basketball. Dominique Coley looking for help. The jump ball is going to be called as Coley gets tied up with Medley. Jordan just continued to attack the basket. We'll say foul was on the floor. Actually, it wasn't a foul, it went out of bounds.
Foul called against Brockton, against Jennifer Caruso. Be interesting to see how these six freshman players develop as basketball players over the next four years. Taryn Johnson, I remember, was a four-year member of the varsity team. We're going to have six of them four years from now. Taryn Johnson, um, one of the greatest basketball players I've seen in Brockton in history. And I'm not talking about you know, female, I'm talking about both male and female, just what a talent. She's having a great career over at Fieldfield Field, um, University, and she'll be graduating this year. College, go figure. You know, don't get me started on Taryn Johnson, one of the best basketball players I've ever seen on this hardwood. What do you think of the best athletes to come out of Brockton High in the past 20 years? Who do you think of? I think of Taryn Johnson. You gotta be kidding me. Taryn Johnson's oh, top top five. Man, that was like badminton up there. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> Kevin Bradley channeling but his right inner Tommy Heinsohn. Head coach I mean, for the Woody Wildcats. They're up high enough to clean the dust off the backboard. <laughs> that is awesome. Uh, <laughs> can't believe you knew about that. It's a charity game. It's, um... I think of top athletes, he, he, you know, you got to start with, um, you know, um, Taron Johnson. Now, I'm only speaking for, you know, 20, you're talking about 20 years. Some players oh, I've never oh, seen before, oh. but in my era, or, you know, Sam Basong, Rockton High. Going back to the football team, Peter Harris. Peter Harris. Harris. Anthony yeah, Comer. Two minutes to hold him. <laughs> <laughs> He's in a hockey game. Put the pee in the whistle. <laughs> You know what, the viewers can hear this. I'm not on a reason to repeat it, it's awesome. I but think that head coach Kevin Bradley is up in the ante with his comments because no, he knows no, you're enjoying no, them so much. No. I'm a big Kevin Bradley fan, I like Oh him. man, hey, she just did a split. But um, top athletes for you, I mean, Taryn Johnson, Sam Basong. Um, oh wow. I mean, Shantae Bonds. We really had some outstanding um, How about the 2009-2010 you know, Massachusetts Volleyball Player of the Year, Morgan Thatcher? Morgan Thatcher. Banner hanged in her honor. I mean, that 2000 basketball team, you know, we really had some great female athletes go to the school. Shantae Bonds, um, just wow, what a player. <laughs> Tiffany, um, uh, Tiffany Higgins. You know, I gotta say, head coach Kevin Bradley, a lot of his criticisms were the same ones we've had. Yeah. I like the guy. <laughs> you just like the way he puts them, newbie. Yes, he's an awesome man. Come from the, we come from the same school. Except yeah. you're laughing at every comment he has and he's like a foot away from you. You better know that you're laughing with him. Well, yeah, you know, this, you know, we, we, we got one of these days, Peter, really have a special show on, on, on top Brockton athletes. Uh, because there's so many that have come to this school, Peter. Well, let me ask you this question. Who are your top five in the past 10 years? Top five in the past 10 years? 20, I would have to, I would want to take a little bit more time to compile yeah. that list and do it just on the fly. Because 20 years, I mean, That's we, an episode of One North Main. It's yeah, right. we will take a look at that because, um, wow, we talk about the talent that's come through these, this school. You, talk, you gotta talk about, you know, Jason Vega. You know. Jason Vega actually just played in the Grey Cup this year. Um, in the Canadian football. You know, it's league. funny, I actually thought Jason Vega as a player got better as he got higher in his in his in his uh, football career. He was a very good player in high school. And an outstanding work ethic above yeah, all. Yeah, but I always I always thought he even he improved. The type, of, the type of guy that will get not only the most of his talents, but more because he puts the work in. It's almost like, you know, a player. I like that hustle. For example, uh, Dwayne Wade got better in the NBA when he was in Marquette. You know, he was always a good player, but, you know, he rose to a whole new level when the competition got higher. I'm not comparing him to a professional you know, athlete, but well, actually, well, you know, he, well, he is a professional athlete. I mean, that's... 
So many athletes on Peter. I what just about don't know our early '90s Greg McMurtry who played a few seasons for the New York I don't. I, yeah, I don't remember. The, I don't remember, so I can't even comment. I'm just going back ten years. Um, that's how far back as I can go. I saw an announcement. I was you know, what, 13, 14, I'm 23 now, so I can't really comment on someone I don't know, Peter. Sammy, go, go, just go, go, Kendall. Nice play by Chanel Melton. Lays it up and in. Well, yeah, we will do a One North Main episode on that and, uh, and, and you know, do our top uh, high school players. Oh, look at this transition defense. Awful. Chanel Three on Melton zero. Again. Timeout called by head coach Kevin Bradley. 2.06 left to go in the game. 68 55. Brockton is on top by 13. And this might be the best performance we've seen from the Lady Boxers all season against a very respectable opponent. Not just respectable, a very good opponent. These are, these are, Wildcats. These are big confidence boosters right here, Peter. I mean, obviously, it's not uh, going to mean much this season in terms of, um, you know, standings and so forth. The Boxers are struggling, but just for in terms of a general confidence going to next year. This whole team is going to be back, Peter. Um, this whole team is going to be back except for, for Diana. Um, the, so the chemistry automatically is going to be there. And that, that's probably the most important thing in basketball is having that team chemistry and being comfortable with each other. And, um, you know, the talent's, the talent's there. It just needs to be molded. Duffy on the inside, no good. Rebounded by Whittier Tech. Chantel Jordan down low. 15 point game, 70 55. Brockton up, buck 18 left to go and counting remaining in this game. Go to the match, go to the match. Complete domination, Peter, here today from start to finish. I mean, it's complete domination. Caruso with the ball gets it over to Jordan off the glass and in. 17 point game now, a minute to go. Medley for three, no good. Rebounded by Melton for Brockton. Leah Brito down low. She's fouled. She'll head to the free throw line. One in one situation. I think she'll be shooting two regardless. 50 seconds on the clock. Jets got a slice to the basket right there rather than fade away from the shot.
foul called against Brockton. That was called against Aliyah Brito. So we're going to be seeing where your tech head to the free throw line. It's Adriana Joe. And we'll see Christian McDuffie check into the game for Brockton, along with Narita Montron. That allows Aliyah Brito to leave the game. And Chantel Jordan, who gets a fantastic ovation from the crowd. She's played excellent tonight. And now we're seeing Chanel Melton take a breather. And she gets a big ovation from the crowd as well for her performance. And Montron, the freshman, puts it in for two. The crowd erupts. Final seconds of the game ticking away. 74-55, Brockton with the lead. Perhaps one last shot for Whittier. It's not to be. Your final score, Brockton wins by 19, 74 to 55. Brockton with a dominant win over the now 14 and 5 Whittier Tech Wildcats. What an excellent team performance by the Lady Boxers here tonight, Newbie. Peter, I'm very excited about the future. I'm really, really excited about this team. On senior night, um, definitely going out on top. Uh, Diana Abraham, kudos to her, but um, hey, just uh, a dominant performance, and we're, we're in for a treat the next few years, Peter. We really are. Your final score from Staff Gymnasium, the Lady Boxers 74, the Whittier Tech Wildcats 55. For everyone here at BCA, my broadcast partner, Newbie Rateau, I'm Peter Zimbor. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us.